In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about the Cut File Manager, how to bring it up, and generally how to use it. The Cut File Manager is a big uh, module and it does a lot of things, but it doesn't need to be over confusing if you just use it for what it's designed to do. There's a lot of things it can do, and if you go into the other help files or lessons, you'll learn all about those things. But for now, what we're interested in is how to find this Cut File Manager and how to generally use it. So if I go to page two here, this is a job that we provide to you in your samples folder. And we've got this hamburger here, which I'll use as the example. I'll select on that. I come up here and I go select by color. We can see all these colors this hamburger is made up of. The red, the green, the browns, etc. So there's a lot of colors in this particular uh, this object here, in this example. So we'll just cut this for the time being, just to uh, introduce the cut file manager to you. So if I wanted to cut out this hamburger here, I'd come up to this button here, send a cut file, as you can see. And if I click on that, the cut file manager comes up. Now I just reposition its size so it fits within our recording size, like so. Okay, so this is our cut file manager. And as you can see, you've got these colors here that we just looked in the job before. So I'll just stick on this here so we can see that that's representative of the background of that hamburger there. So right smack bang in the middle here, we have a picture of our plotter. It tells us what plotter we've got selected and what our cutting width is here. So that's important information to know. We also see things like the actual size of the cut file that we're about to cut. So we can know what we're about to do. Now, this module is presented in a fairly straightforward manner. Along the top we've got our regular type menus. We've got open and save type tools and zoom tools. We've got some uh, specific tools on how to handle each individual uh, cut file or group of cut files. Got some special tools like side view. Again, this has got its own special uh, 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 help file and it's got its own lesson so you're much better off watching that independently of this. And on the left hand side we've got our regular type controls like uh, object selection and panning and zooming and things. If I click on the object, well I'll show you that in a moment how these duplicate tools etc work, but we'll get to those in a moment. First the simple things. So here we've got our colors and as we scroll through these we can see our colors. So you can see how the cut file manager has just gone ahead and color separated all this for us automatically. We didn't have to do any of that, that's all automatic. And over here we have a couple of tabs. Now the Arrange Cut File tab is an advanced tab. Right now we're interested in the color separation tab. And in this tab we can set things like the type of vinyl cutter we've got, so we can select that from our list here, and whatever we've got installed will come up in this list. At the moment I've got a couple of roller machines installed. Here's a list of our colors here, and we can turn colors on and off. So we can show them or not show them. We can set the number of copies. So if I select on this uh, on the bun here, and I want to say do six copies of that, you can see here I can set that there. I can also delete things, and I can also merge some of these colors together if I want to. I'll talk about those options in a little while. So we'll set that back to one. Now here we're talking about the tile width and the tile height. Okay, this is terminology you might not be familiar with, so I'll quickly explain that. When we're talking about tile width, we're talking about the width here and we're talking about the cuttable width. So at the moment it's set to 23 inches. Now the reason for that is is because on a Roland GX24 you have two pinch rollers on each side. And those pinch rollers are around about half an inch wide each. So together they take up an inch. And the way the roller machine works is you can't cut past the rollers. Now on some uh, different machines you can uh, cut past the rollers, so clearly it depends on the machine itself what the cuttable width is. But when you have a regular 24 inch machine like this one here, you'd set your cutting width to 23 inches. Now when you install a vinyl cutter, uh, Vinyl Master will automatically set it to uh, around about an inch narrower than what the machine can actually physically cut. Uh, and you can override that. I mean you can set this to any uh, amount you like, that's entirely up to you. But by default it, it's set it an inch uh, smaller in a sense to protect you from um, you know, setting it too wide where you can't physically cut it and you end up not cutting the tops of um, or the sides of, uh, of your objects that you want to cut out. So when we talk about tile width, we're talking about the media width. Now that could be paper, it could be vinyl or whatever you happen to have in your machine, but that's what we're talking about when we talk about tile width. It's the cuttable width. Tile height is the length of our uh, material or our, uh, um, our media and that will be determined, the length that you set that to will be determined on the type of machine you've got. A sprocket fed machine of course can go much longer because it won't run off, um, but a regular type vinyl cutter these days, you might set that to say 10 feet um, or 3 meters or something along those lines. You don't want to have this too long because 
naturally these, these machines tend to run off after about uh, a certain distance, 10, 20 feet. But again, it really does depend on your machine and how much trouble you go to to line it up. So that's what we're talking about there. When we talk about tile to media, what we're talking about there is we're saying we're going to crop uh, the job to fit within the media. Now when the cut files that you've got are within the media's width, like all of these ones, tile to media really isn't applicable. But what I'll quickly show you here, just to make the point, is I'll go to arrange cut file and I'll change this, uh, this burger's uh, size here by selecting on it and you can see its scale is 100%. I'll make that 500% and we'll zoom to all, this button down here, zoom to all, and you can see here that it's actually cutting, it's far too large for the width we've got. So it's 39 inches wide, but we've only got 23 inches of vinyl that we can cut. So what we need to do here is click on Tile to Media, and you can see that the program automatically fits each individual tile, and you've got two tiles as you can see in the colours here, to fit within those tiles. So if I go to Colour Separation, you can see there's the first tile, and there's the second tile. So Tile to Media is basically cropping the actual cut file to fit within each individual strip or tile of, uh, of media. So that's what tile to media means. So that's what we're referring to. So I'll just undo that and go back to where we were and we'll zoom to all again like that. So that's what we were meaning when we were talking about uh, tile to media. Okay, we've got position X and position Y. It's fairly straightforward. If I've got this object here and I change its position, you can see what's happening here. I'm actually changing it physically by using these up and down arrows. Of course, I can type in a measurement. I can set that at 5 inches or I can set this at 2.3 inches, whatever I want to, and it will position there. You'll also notice in Vinyl Master or in the Cut File Manager that when you look at measurements, you'll see it in metric inches, feet, and yards as well, which is a handy thing to have. So that explains how that works there. And I can just set this back to zero, and that goes back as it was there. We have tools like um, Apply to All, so obviously if I uncheck that, uh, whatever I change on this, like Copies, I'll only get that many copies of that particular object. If I go to four, I've only got one, as you can see. Now if I undo all that, go back to one and I click or check apply to all, and I do multiple copies, you can see now I've got three of these and I've got three of these. So that's what apply to all does. It physically means that anything I'm changing will apply to everything in the list, as you can see there. So that's those tools there. And we've got auto speed weed, which is, has, again has its own little uh, uh, lesson and, and uh, help file that it will explain to you what all those things mean. But Speedweed is just basically a way of weeding much more quickly and more efficiently. We'll turn that on and off. We can rotate things 90 degrees or so. And we've got other tools up here for these sorts of things. And of course we've got the menus and in here we can do things uh, like m most of the actual operations are actually in the menus as well. Plus a few extras. Like for example, if I want to see this in um, wireframe, I can see it in wireframe. If I don't want to see these dimensions here, I can turn those off. And certain tools like that, I can see everything in black, for example. If I want to see all these colours just shown in black, just for a quick thing in wireframe, just so it's all very fast and snappy, because this yellow isn't shown very well. So if I turn that off, you can see that the yellow is not quite as clear, so I might want to see that drawn in black. So I have those sorts of options. And I can also look at it in wireframe or its colour. So these are the sort of options you've got up here. OK, I can save my cut files and I can open cut files, uh, which is a handy thing to be able to do because if you've got jobs that are fairly complicated that you've processed, in other words, you've rotated and speed weeded and do, done all these sorts of things, you can actually save that work off because you might be doing that as a repetitive job, so you might want to save that work off. And of course I've got things like zoom in, zoom out, I've got a zoom mode, etc, etc. So I can see what I'm doing, I can undo and redo things as I was doing before, I can zoom in, zoom out, and do all those sorts of normal things. So that's quite a powerful tool there, and you'll find the colour separation tab is the one that you'll generally work with most of the time. When you have some advanced concepts, like example, I'll go back to this at uh, 500% again. Uh, oh, I need to select it, of course. And uh, I've set that, and I'll tile it to my media there. I get some advanced things, like I can set uh, other other issues, like the tile bleed. So I can set the amount of overlap here. If I want a one inch overlap, I can set my overlap like that. Um, I can set my weed box offset. So if I want a weed box here, I can set the offset to say one inch like that. Select my item as so by dragging over it. Come up to the edit menu and add a weed box like that and reposition it where I want to. And you'll find it will snap to the bottom right corner. 
so I can add weed boxes, I can set my weeding offsets and uh, all these sorts of things. These are some advanced tools. Again, I'm repeating myself, but all of these things have their own lessons and explain to you what to do. But it, they're essentially, they're fairly self-evident. I mean, you can come in here and experiment with these things and you can quickly see what it's doing. The crop options, these, these force the object to be uh, cut in a certain position. So if I go to color, I'll just select on this object here. So you can see this red is, is blocked to the bottom right corner here. If I go to here on the red and I select on it and say I change its position as so, I'll go back to color separation and you'll see it's actually in that position there. If I want to force that position, I can use, I need to title it to media, sorry. If I want to force that position, I can select it and I can go trim left, trim base, go back here and it forces its position. Now if I turn that off and come back to color separate, you can see how it's blocked to the bottom right corner here. So these sort of tools here, these are useful for forcing where things are actually cut. If I click on those two, I go cut tile to the red here, you can see it's forced it to cut in this actual position. Whereas if I didn't do that, if I didn't check these on uh, and I send them to the, uh, to the spooler, you can see it's in the bottom right corner like that. So that's, these sort of tools are very handy for that thing. I also have tools like grouping and ungrouping and these follow the same uh, rules that they do in the main program so there's nothing different about these. They just give you the control. If I want to uh, ungroup this, I can ungroup the pieces and I can move them around or I can combine them or break them apart or split them. I have these sorts of controls down here. I can add things like align marks, I can add speed weed boxes here to individual things, double click to change where I want to put my, my cutting lines like that, double click to turn them off. These are the sorts of controls you have in the uh, cut file manager. So overall this, this particular uh, set of tools here do a lot of advanced functions. I can, for example, rotate in 5 degrees or in 90 degree blocks. I can fit things to the media. Um, for example, I can fit that, or this object here, I can fit it to the media. In other words, the width that I've got like this. So I've got all these sorts of tools. If you ever get stuck on these tools, you're not quite sure what they do, you've got these quick help files here, and they, these will explain to you, as you can see here, I'll click on this one, these will explain to you what all these tools individually do. So they're, they're quite handy, these help files, and they'll pop up underneath the, um, the help button. They're only coming into the center here because we're recording the screen. So there's quite a lot of help here. Of course, you can go to the main help topics by clicking here to find out, you know, detailed information about how all these things work. Um, and that's, and you can use that docker to put these things away like this. You can use the pan tools, and generally, all of these tools combine together to give you a lot of control over how you deal with your cut files. And when you're ready to cut, you can either cut all or cut the tile like this, uh, and that will send all of these to the cut file, uh, to the vinyl spooler, and from the vinyl spooler is where you actually send your uh, cut files directly to your plotter. So be sure to look in the menus. If you're ever unsure about where something is, you'll find most of the things up here. You can also see advanced things like the vinyl usage report, sorts of information like that. Um, and that's how the cut file manager uh, generally works, as you can see. And be sure to check the help files and watch the individual lessons on all these different things that you can do using this module. It's a very powerful module and lets you do a lot of things. And that's the end of this lesson.